Our neighbor, he went through to Zambia and he took a picture of like the stars, the Milky Way and so forth. So I actually have the picture here now today on the laptop. I don't think you'll be able to, to see it nicely. But anyway, it is over here. And again, the principle of the whole story is simply this. That though the Milky Way and the, this galaxy looks so beautiful, it looks so nice, it looks so glorious and so forth. The reality and truth is that we, both myself... Both my lovely wife, who looks like a model from Switzerland today. All right, ooh la la. Ah, all right. <laughs> but both, her, both every single one of you here today, we have the awesome opportunity, the privilege, the, the blessed opportunity, because of what Jesus Christ has done, we have this amazing opportunity to know the one who created this. The one who spoke the earth into existence. We have the awesome opportunity to ultimately know him. But maybe perhaps the star, you know, this galaxy, it doesn't fascinate you too much. So I'll go to the next picture here. The next picture is a picture of what you call Table Mountain. It's one of the biggest main tourist attractions locally here in South Africa. I mean, if you are coming from Poland somewhere and you're coming to visit South Africa, you kind of want to go to Cape Town and then, you know, you want to maybe go on one of those cable cars up you know, towards Cape Town, and uh, towards Table Mountain and so forth. It's a massive, massive tourist attraction, okay? And though the mountain looks beautiful, though the ocean looks beautiful, my friends, both myself, my lovely wife who looks like a model from Switzerland, ooh la la, ah, and, and, and every single one of you over here today, we have this amazing opportunity and privilege and honor to know the one who created this. All right? We have that opportunity to know the source of this creation over here. And not only is he the creator, but he also happens to be our father. Not only does he happen to be the creator, but he also happens to know absolutely every single detail of your life. And we have this privilege of knowing him intimately, personally, and deeply. I think that... Oh, that's a nice... That's a, that was, it was about to hit the tone. It was about to go in. All right? But... I think what religion tends to do is religion tends to make us believe that God is 10,000 kilometers up into the sky and we kind of stuck down here on the earth, right? I mean, the initial thing when we pray, what do we do? We look up, right? And we, and we believe that he's like 40,000 kilometers up there. You know, you go through the galaxies, then you're going to eventually reach him. But the truth is that he is closer than the very skin on your bones. Amen. All right, he's right here with us, sitting with us. He's cry he cries with you when you cry. He mourns with you when you mourn. He laughs with you when you laugh. He's with you every single step of the way of your life. He's right there with you. He's there when people reject you. He's there when people accept you. He's there when great doors open up for you. He's there when you feel discouraged. He's there with you every single step of the way. And I think one thing that the problems of life, one thing that the worries of life tends to do for both myself, my lovely wife, every single one of you here, that when you go through a trial, when you go through pain, when you go through hardship, it's kind of like, where is God in all of this? You know, you find the skinny guy come and tell you, you know, he loves you so, so much, Goopy, because I'm going through this, 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 and this. But the day you discover, my friends, that there's nothing, absolutely nothing, luto, nada, nix, that can separate from the love of God, all right, that changes our lives. Because when you know that you are loved, you realize that when a problem does come, that problem is not going to overcome you. You are going to overcome the problem. Why? Because you know that you are loved. And because you know that you are loved, you realize that you are blessed. And because you realize that you are blessed, you know that you are blessed coming in and you're blessed going out. No matter what the bank account says, no matter what's happening at home, no matter what's busy happening with your child, you know that you are blessed. Why? Because you know that you are loved by your father. People think that when they're going through a tough time, when they're going through a hard time, our thoughts, you know, go all over the place. And we think, maybe I'm going through this because God is trying to punish me. My friends, that is not the case. He's not trying to punish you. All of his punishment, all of his judgment towards sin fell upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, you are translated from one place into the next place. You are translated from being cursed into being blessed. And my friends, what is blessed cannot be cursed. What is blessed cannot be cursed. No matter what anyone else tells you, what is blessed cannot be cursed. And in Christ, best believe, you are blessed. Why? Because He took he, your curse and my curse, He took it upon Himself. So you could enter into a position of blessed. That's what He did for us. 
And the more you hear that day after day after day after day, eventually you're going to begin to believe it. Eventually you're going to begin to believe it. It's like a game, for example. You ask the kids at school, hey, champs, campeones, what's 16 times 16? Hey, I'm ours, yeah. But you ask them, what's the new Casper song? They can rap you the whole song. Yeah. Why? Because they're listening to it over and over and over and over and over and over. And what you listen to, what you watch, you're eventually going to believe that if you're watching it over and over and listening to it over and over and over. Now, if that's the case for stuff like that, like a song, what about the Word of God? If you're hearing on a daily basis, you are blessed coming in, blessed going out. If you hear that on a daily basis that God is not punishing you, but He's actually setting you up for victory. If you're hearing this on a daily basis, eventually you're going to believe it. Which means that when a problem now does come, you are approaching it from a completely different place. And now that problem is not going to cause you to drown, but you're going to rise above the affliction. You're going to rise above the pain. Why? Because you know that He has overcome and therefore you too shall overcome moving forward. All right. Next picture over here, beautiful picture of what you call uh, Mauritius, right? You look at the beach, it looks beautiful, it looks wow, it looks aha. Again, the point is this, that we have the awesome privilege and honor of getting to know the one who created this. We, we can know him, we can walk a road with him, we can journey with him every single day of our lives. And listen, if God did not even spare his own son, remember, he didn't send a goat. He didn't send a little, you know, a little sheep here. Nah, he didn't send a, a, a crooked angel. He sent his best. Like it cost him something. Yes. And it cost him everything. The one preacher says that heaven went bankrupt to buy you back. Because yeah. God sent his very best. Why? Because you matter to him. I mean, how often, for example, you hear preachers when they preach, they talk about the promised land. Right? We go into the promised land. That's awesome. Yes, but do you realize, here's, here's a thought. Do you realize that you sitting here today, as an individual, you are God's promised land. You are His milk and honey. Do you realize what that does to you when that, when that, when that happens? Do you realize that you, as an individual, you have stolen God's heart? That is on a day that goes by when He's not thinking about you. All he thinks about is you. I mean, you could be thinking about, you know, the beach and what the next beach is going to make. No, he's thinking about you. And the thoughts that he has towards you are thoughts to prosper you, not to harm you. Thoughts to give you a hope and a future. Just like, for example, you as a parent, you want to give your child what? A hope and a future. That's why you send them to school, right? <laughs> because you want to give them a better life, a better future and so forth. Now, if that's the case for you, what about God? Who's your father? But we don't believe that. We think God's some grumpy old man, all right, with a big beard and whatnot, and standing there with the baseball bat every single time you do something wrong. What? That's not him. He, I mean, he's slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. He's gracious and kind. Longing to bless you, longing to open doors, longing to walk a journey with you, but we still decide to go our own way. 